guys, Mr. Bagger here. Part two of lesson 3.5, we're gonna do more application problems with exponential and logarithmic functions. One objective, using exponential and logarithmic models to solve real life problems. With our Gaussian model, we use that to represent a population that has normal distribution, which is how we get the bell-shaped curve to it. To find the average value, what we're gonna look for is the highest Y value or the maximum Y value. And then if we're looking for the average, we're just gonna grab that corresponding X value. In our first example, we're looking at some math scores for students in a math class, and it says it roughly follows normal distribution given to us by this Y equals 0 0.0399 E to the power of negative X minus 74 squared, all divided by 14. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sketch out a graph. Actually, I'm gonna use my calculator to draw the graph and we're gonna use that graph to estimate the average math score. I already have my equation typed into my calculator. We are gonna to have to change the window though to fit our data. So changing the X values first. On the problem, we were told that we were gonna deal with X values between 30 and 110. So I'm just gonna fill those in for my X values, minimum of 30, maximum of 110. We're also gonna to have to change the Y value. Now we're gonna end up with some very small numbers for these Y values since we're talking about percentages of the population. So I'm only going to go up to 0.05 on my Y value. Now if we graph this out, we should get that bell-shaped curve. We said we were looking for the highest Y value on this curve, so what I'm gonna do is hit second trace and it lets me pick a maximum operation. So I'm picking that thing. We wanna to be to the left of that highest point. So I hit enter. Then we wanna arrow over to the right past that highest point. And again, I'll hit enter. Let's us take a guess, but we don't have to. We can just hit enter one more time. And it tells me that the average is at about 74 for that X value. Next example, we're looking at modeling a virus growth on a college campus of 7,500 students. So we've got this equation, y equals 7,500 divided by one plus 7,499 times e to the negative 0.9t, where we're using t values that are greater than or equal to zero because t is gonna represent the number of days. We're also told that the college is going to cancel classes if 30% or more of the students are affected. So the first thing we want to figure out is how many students are actually going to be affected after four days. So what this means is we're going to have a T value of four and we're just going to plug that into our equation. Now I've already got everything typed into my calculator. Be careful where you're putting the parentheses when you type this stuff in just to make sure that our calculator is doing the order of operations in the order that we actually want it to. If we hit enter, we get about 36. So we could say after four days, there's roughly 36 students that are affected by this virus. Taking a look at the next part, we're gonna figure out how many days it's gonna take the college to cancel classes. Remember earlier we said that they'd cancel if 30% or more of the students are affected. So the first thing we should do is figure out what 30% of that original 7,500 is. If you check it on your calculator, you're gonna get 2,250. So what we're gonna do is set that equal to our 7,500 over one plus 7,499 e to the negative 0 0.9 t power. And what we have to do is go through and solve for this t value. Now, I don't like this fraction look, so what I'm gonna do is take this denominator and multiply it over to the other side. Now that we've got that denominator multiplied over, I'm actually gonna divide this 2,250 over to the right-hand side. If we do that, we get one plus 7,499e to the negative 0.9t equals 3.3 repeating. Now we're trying to solve for this t value, so what that means is we're gonna end up moving everything over to the other side. So I'm gonna start by subtracting this one over. So we've got 7,499e to the negative 0.9t equals 2.3 repeating. 
Now I'm going to divide by that 7,499. But I'm not going to type this into my calculator just yet. So we've got e to the negative 0.9t equals 2.3 repeating over 7499. Now this is in exponential form right now. In order to solve it, I think it would be helpful to rewrite it in logarithmic form. So I'm gonna go natural log of 2.3 repeating divided by that 7,499 equals negative 0.9t. I think now would be the time where I would type this left-hand side into my calculator. You'll notice when I type this one in, I took the 2.3 repeating out to three decimals. If I hit enter, we get negative 8.075 and some other decimals. Our last step is we need to divide by that negative 0.9, and I'm actually just going to do that right on my calculator. So we take that answer that we just got, divided by negative 0.9, hit enter, and we get about nine days. Taking a look at our next example, we're gonna look at some bacterial growth. So it's modeled by this function n equals 100 e to the kt, where t is our time in hours. We're told that our n value is gonna be 280 at a time of 10 hours, and what we wanna do is estimate the time required for the population to double in size. One thing we should note is that at a t value of zero, if we were to plug zero into here, we're actually gonna end up with an n value of 100. So eventually, to get our population to double, we'll be looking at 200, but what we have to find first is this growth factor k. So I'm gonna use that n value of 280 and that t value of 10 and plug those in. So we've got 280 equals 100 e to the power of k times 10, and what we're gonna do is solve for this k value. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 100. So we get 2.8 equals e to the 10 k power. In order to solve this one, I think I will rewrite it in logarithmic form. So natural log of 2.8 equals 10 k. I'll divide both sides by 10 and then type this stuff into my calculator. I'm gonna do the natural log of 2.8 first, hit enter, and then I'll divide that answer by the 10, so we get 0 0.103 if we round it to three decimals. Plugging in that k value, we've got n equals 100 e to the 0 0.103 t power, and now we were told that we wanted our population to double, so I'm gonna make this n value 200 equals 100 e to the 0 0.103 t, and then we'll go through and solve this one. So first step is to divide by that 100. So we get two equals e to the 0 0.103 t, rewrite it in logarithmic form, so natural log of two equals 0 0.103 t, and then divide by that decimal 1.03. And again, I'm gonna type this left-hand stuff into my calculator. I'm doing that natural log of two first, hit enter, and then we'll divide that answer by our 0 0.103. So we get a T value of 6.7 hours. Here we go, last example. We're taking a look at the Richter scale, which is used to measure the magnitude of earthquakes. So we've got R equals log of I divided by I sub zero. We're told that that I sub zero value is gonna be one because that's the minimum intensity used to compare earthquakes. So first thing we're gonna do is look at finding the magnitude R if we're given an intensity of 68,400,000. So all we have to do is plug that into our equation up here. So R equals log of that 68,400,000 over that I sub zero value of one. And now this is just a calculator problem. If we type that into our calculator, we're gonna get about 7.84 as our R value. Taking a look at the second part. This time we're told the magnitude is 6.8. We wanna figure out the intensity. So I'm gonna plug in this 6.8 for my R value equals the log of, we don't know what this I thing is, but we do know that our I sub zero value on bottom is one. 
Now we don't really need to divide by one here, so we could just write that as log of i. In order to solve this one, it's in logarithmic form right now, I think I would take it and rewrite it in exponential form. Since there's not a base written here, remember it's an implied base 10, so we'd go 10 to the 6.8 power equals i, and again, this is just a calculator problem. If we type that in, we get about 6,309,573. I guess that's it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.